Hey, Happy Campers, Todd here, Great American RV Superstores, and today we're going over our GE air conditioner. We're going to go over operation, a little bit of diagnostics, and maintenance. So let's start with a little bit of operation. Let's jump right into our thermostat operation and how that works. This is our GE thermostat. We have several buttons right here. Our mode button, when you push it once, it's gonna bring us to the fan mode. Now this will turn the fan on and let it run all the time. It will not cool your unit. It just circulates the air throughout it. If we hit our fan button down at the bottom, we can see it goes from a higher speed to a lower speed. Hit it one more time with those two dashes that will bring that fan to the high speed. If we hit mode again, we will see our cool snowflake pop up there at the top. That lets us know that we are now in cool mode. On the right hand side, we can adjust our temperature to whatever we want. Now, if we are in the cool mode, we see auto right here. This will mean that the fan will turn off whenever the compressor turns off and turn on whenever the compressor turns on, much like your AC at home. Now, during the hot, hot summer months, you're gonna wanna take it from auto and go regular into a fan mode on, generally in high. This will help keep the fins on that air conditioner dry in between cycles of the compressor, and this helps reduce the opportunity for that air conditioner to freeze up. So on any temperature over 90 degrees or so, I suggest leaving that fan in the on mode where it is running all the time. If we hit mode one more time, if we have a furnace hooked up to it, which is generally a gas appliance, it will go ahead and kick on. And once again, we operate that temperature right here on the right. Next thing we wanna do is talk about some diagnostics. Our AC needs 110 volts as well as 12 volts in order to operate. So if we ever have a situation where our fan isn't turning on at all when we initiate that thermostat, whether on the cool function or just the fan function, we're not hearing that fan blower turn on. That could be an issue where we're not getting 110 to the actual air conditioner, our thermostat is on, everything seems okay. So the first thing you wanna check is make sure that you're getting power from your power pole. You can go ahead and look at your microwave and at least see, hey, I'm getting power to my unit. From there, we wanna go check our breakers on our breaker panel inside the unit and confirm that all our breakers are on, nothing is tripped. The other thing, like we said, we need 12 volts. So that's confirming that our battery is charged up, we have good battery power, but that our charging system is kicked in and charging our battery or supplying enough voltage from that charging system in order to operate that AC. If our thermostat doesn't turn on at all, then we know we probably have a 12 volt issue. If our lights are on and everything else is on inside that unit, we can go over our 12 volt fuse panel and confirm that we don't have a blown fuse for that thermostat. If we've checked all these things as far as 12 volts or 110 and we still can't find a resolution, from that point, we wanna go ahead and call our service center and set up an appointment or we can book online at greatamericanrv.com. Beyond those two simple things that we can check, there could be a whole lot more going on. We could have a circuit board problem, a wiring issue, compressor issue, or a fan issue somewhere in line, in which case you wanna have our technicians check it out. Beyond no power issues, if our air conditioner seems to turn on, thermostat's working, it's blowing air out, but the air doesn't seem cool, well, then we may have an issue with our actual compressor or may have an issue where the system has leaked out and it's not actually cooling. So from there, these are sealed units. You can't call an AC company to come out and add Freon to it. They don't have taps on them. So at that point, you wanna go ahead and call a service center for sure and get it checked out. So we've gone over some simple diagnostics. Let's talk about maintenance. What do we need to do to make sure our AC keeps up and that it is working efficiently? The first thing, easiest thing, and the thing you need to be doing the most often is checking this filter and making sure that it is clean. Real easy access, grab it, pull it off, and make sure that this filter is clean. You can blow it off with a compressor, you can dust it off, whatever you need to do, but clean it, okay? This can suffocate your unit and cause that unit to freeze up. From there on the interior, we can see that we have a divider right here in the middle. That divider keeps the air from mixing. So you have your return air right here where the air gets sucked in to be cooled off, and then our output, which either comes out of our dump right here if it's open, or if it's closed, it's gonna come out of our vents on the roof. So if air, if our cold air coming out gets mixed with our hot air going in, it can cause condensation up on our fins and it can definitely cause that unit to freeze up. 
this is a common issue that tends to happen with air conditioners over time. So we're gonna take this ceiling assembly down, we're gonna get a better look. One thing I'll point out on GE air conditioners, these two caps right here on the front, they are directional. They have an R and an L on them to let you know which one goes where. So be sure whenever you put it back, you put it back in the right place. So we've got our ceiling assembly down. We can see here this is our control board where our 110 goes in as well as our 12 volts. This controls your unit uh, besides the thermostat, it tells it what to do. So this is our divider we have right here. You can see it even with that ceiling assembly on, but this gives you a little bit better view, gives you an angle from the back so you can see if there's any areas where the air might be leaking through. G has really great design, so it's, it's pretty tight in there and very minimal with any air coming out. You do wanna pay attention to any holes where it might lead to the attic where wires are coming through. You can tape over that with that silver HVAC tape or fill it with some great stuff foam and reduce any air coming in from the attic. From there, if you were ever get any leakage over time from this foam deteriorating, taking some of that HVAC tape and just taping over the edges of this to reduce that air mixture from this side to this side will greatly help the efficiency of this unit. We will notice on our output side that we have ducting right here that we do not want to tape over. This leads to our AC ducts up in our ceiling. And if you seal that off, then we're not going to get any airflow out. Another thing you want to check once a year is these mounting bolts right here on the four corners. Make sure that these are torqued down properly and that AC gasket is nice and compressed. Otherwise, it could lead to leakage later on down the road. That's not something that happens too often, but definitely something you want to keep an eye on. That covers all our maintenance on the interior. Let's check on the roof and see what we need to keep up with there. Next tip is up top on our AC. We would remove this top cover right here and do a little service on our condenser coil. So when removing your shroud, you want to make sure to be careful and not damage any of the fins on the back. That's part of what you're coming here to check, is you want to make sure that these fins are free of any debris, leaves, dirt, uh, dirt divers, any funk like that. Make sure that your power is off on your AC. Go click that breaker off. Before you come up here, you don't want to have any ex unexpected power ons of the air conditioner. So once you're up here and you have access, you want to get some AC condenser uh, coil cleaner. Take it, shake it up real good, and spray it onto these coils, probably twice if they're real dirty, and just allow all that stuff to come down. You can hit it with a water hose if you need, a light, light hit with the water hose, so like a spray mode or something like that, you don't want to hit it with a jet because once again, that'll damage these coils. So if any of these fins are damaged, you can get a fin tool at any local hardware store and straighten those fins out. This is important because this is where the air circulates to cool the, uh, the unit inside. So if these fins are blocked off or if they're blocked up with a bunch of dirt and debris, then your AC isn't gonna function like it should. So that'll keep it from cooling your unit and it's gonna keep you hot and sweaty. So we've covered diagnostics, operation, a little bit of maintenance that we need to do on our unit. Let's talk about the expectation of our RV air conditioner. Our air conditioners only have a 20 degree split. That means the difference of the air going into the air conditioner and the air coming out is only gonna be a 20 degree drop. So if it's 110 degrees when you first get to the campsite and you turn that air conditioner on, you're only gonna get a 90 degree output at first. That means that the air coming out of that air conditioner is not gonna be that cold. You're not really gonna notice a huge difference. So it's gonna take some time before this unit cools off and we're putting in 90 degree air or 80 degree air where we're seeing a 60 or 70 degree air output really noticing a difference in that unit and beginning to cool it down. So we need to set that expectation that this AC isn't gonna cool the unit off very quickly. It's gonna take a little bit of time when you first get to the campground if you're dealing with very high temperatures. A couple of tips to help combat that whenever you first get to the campground, if everybody's kind of in this area, you're really more focused about cooling off just this one general area, you can open that quick dump valve and this is gonna blow the air out directly out of that ceiling assembly versus coming out of the roof vents uh, that are in your ceiling. Once that area cools off, you can close it off and it will go ahead and direct the air throughout the unit and help cool the rest of the unit off. I always suggest customers to turn your AC on first thing in the morning, even though it's not really hot in the unit. This will help keep that cool air in your unit from the very beginning and keep cooler air coming out. If we wait till the unit warms up, it's gonna take a whole lot longer to cool it off and it's not gonna keep up near as well. 
Also closing our shades during the day, keep the sun out, will greatly help the efficiency of that AC. And another thing we need to keep in mind, if we have entry doors near the inputs of those ACs, we wanna make sure that those doors stay closed. The in and out, if we can reduce it as much as possible, that will help your AC too, because the more hot air we get in from outside, the more condensation we're gonna build up on those fins and create the possibility for it to freeze up. And remember, if it freezes up, take it off that cool option, leave that fan on, let it run up for about 30 minutes or so. You're probably gonna to wanna to put a towel or something under that air conditioner. It's not uncommon to have a little water drip out of there. So be aware of that and make sure that you have that area covered so it doesn't get damaged. So thanks for watching, keep watching. Give us a follow, share, like, subscribe, all those awesome things on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, wherever you found us. And keep watching here at Great American RV Superstores where we bring the how-to to you. Making memories one way.